Each time an accident happens, we take a decision that we will be more careful in the future. But even then, accidents and deaths continues. We don't know all these things are happening as part of an inevitable course of life. Let's pray there won't be any accidents in future. Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis, a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with the main points in a nutshell. Iran uses force against protests as region erupts. Obama's budget focuses on path to rein in deficit. Upheaval opens exits in Tunisia. Palestinian leader dissolves cabinet. Silvio Berlusconi faces Ruby's sex charge trial in April. Egypt crisis army sets constitution reform deadline. And now the news in detail. Iran uses force against protests as region erupts. Hundreds of riot police officers in Iran beat protesters and fired tear gas Monday to contain the most significant street protest since the end of 2009. Uprising there as security forces around the region moved, sometimes brutally, to prevent new unrest in sympathy with opposition victory in Egypt. The size of the protest in Iran was unclear. Witness accounts and news reports from inside the country suggested that perhaps 20,000 to 30,000 demonstrators in several cities defied strong warnings and took to the streets. The unrest was an acute embarrassment for Iranian leaders who had sought to portray the topping of the two secular rulers Zainal Abedin Ben Ali in Tunisia and Hosni Mubarak in Egypt as a triumph of popular support for Islam in the Arab world. They had refused permission to Iranian opposition groups seeking to march in solidarity with the Egyptians and warned journalists and photographers based in the country with success not to report on the protests. Iranian demonstrators portrayed the Arab insurrections as a different kind of triumph. Mubarak Ben Ali, now it's time for Saeed Ali. Iranian protesters chanted in Persian on videos posted online that appeared to be from Tehran, referring to the country's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. The Iranian authorities have shown that they will not hesitate to crush demonstrations with deadly force. Other governments across the Middle East and the Persian Gulf also moved aggressively to stamp out protests on Monday. Obama's budget focuses on path to rein in deficit. With President Obama's release on Monday of a budget for next year and House action this week on a Republican plan for immediate deep spending cuts, the nation is getting its clearest view since President took office of the party's competing visions of the role of government, the urgency of addressing the deficit and the best path to long-term economic success. Mr. Obama used his budget for this fiscal year 2012 and beyond to make the case for selectivity cutting spending, while increasing rescues in areas like education and clean energy initiatives that hold the potential for long-term payoffs and economic growth. With this year's deficit projected to hit a record $1.6 trillion, he's laid out a path for bringing down annual deficits to more sustainable levels of over the rest of the decade. Republicans said it was not nearly enough to address chronic fiscal imbalances and reduce the role of federal government in the economy and society. 
Neither party had put forward specific proposals to begin grappling with the most pressing long-term budget problems, the huge costs in the Medicare, Medicaid and Social Security programs as the population ages and medical costs rise, a bill that could overwhelm the government and cramp the economy if not addressed properly. We are doing things that are most painful and at least long-term economic value because we are not willing to do the things that everybody, at least privately, agrees are necessary," said Vin Weber, a Republican Party strategist and former congressman. War two has been followed by a growth rate of a little less than 4.2 percent over five years. Our forecast is about 3.8 percent over five years. So it's slower than the typical recovery. And uh, we assume that because it's harder to get out of a financial recession. The third point I'd raise is that the unemployment rate in our projection is that at the end of 2011, it would be 9.1 percent. By the fourth quarter of 2012, it would be 8.2 percent. That was obviously made in mid-November. The unemployment rate currently stands at 9.0 percent. Unemployment is likely to fluctuate through the year, but any revisions that we have will come out at the, at the mid-session review. Finally, for inflation, we're projecting that in 2011, the CPI inflation will be 1.3 percent, so actually decline from uh, where it is now. It's very much in line with other professional forecasters and that in 2012, 2013, and beyond, we'd go back to something like the Fed's and others' 2% uh, inflation level. Upheaval opens exits in Tunisia. A dozen young men left the village of olive groves and whitewashed houses near the Mediterranean coast last week, bound for Italian island of Lampedusa aboard an overcrowded fishing boat. They were part of the flotilla of would-be migrants that has created a humanitarian crisis and stirred a political furor in Italy. But unlike the more than 5,000 Tunisians who have successfully reached Italy's shores, this group's trip ended in a failure and death. On Monday, villagers buried one of the men, Walid Bayahia, who was killed when the fishing boat collided with a frigid waters with Tunisian National Guard patrol vessel and sank, according to four of the villagers who survived. Four buried and two missing. It's a disaster, said Tarag Bahun, a house painter who attended a funeral. Nothing like this has ever been happened. The fall of Tunisia's autocratic president Zain al Abidin Ben Ali on Jan 14th brought euphoria and hope to this country of 10 million people. But the revolution, as Tunisia's call, it also created a power vacuum. After battling protesters for weeks, the police, fearing retribution, fled their barracks. Palestinian leader dissolves cabinet. The Prime Minister of Palestinian Authority dissolved his cabinet on Monday and was immediately reappointed by the President to form a new one. It was the latest in a series of political steps taken by the authority after the popular uprisings in Tunisia and Egypt. Kazan Khatib, the spokesman for the authorities' government in the West Bank, said that there had been plans for a cabinet reshuffle for months, but that the process had taken longer than expected. Speaking by telephone from Ramallah, the authorities' headquarters, Mr. Khatib said the timing of the move had more to do with Palestinian authorities' timetable for statehood. Prime Minister Salam Fayyad's two-year plan for building the institutions of a state is supposed to be completed by September. That same month, the one-year time frame runs out of direct peace talks with Israel, which the Palestinians have suspended because of continued Israeli settlement construction. And in the absence of a negotiated agreement, the Palestinians hope they will have enough international support by September for a United Nations resolution recognizing their right to a state within the 1967 boundaries. 
Silvio Berlusconi faces Ruby sex charge trial in April. Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi has been indicted to stand trial on charges of paying for sex with an underage prostitute and abuse of power. Examining Judge Cristina Di Senso said the process would start on April 6 after prosecutors in Milan asked for an immediate trial. Mr. Berlusconi denies paying for sex with Karima El Mahroug when she was 17. He also rejects claims that they abused his power by seeking her release when she was detained in another case. He has called for accusations groundless and dismissed the case as a farce. Mr. Berlusconi does, however, acknowledge that the, he called the police while she was being held on suspicion of theft. He said he was doing a favor for the then Egyptian leader Hosni Mubarak because Mr. Berlusconi was told the girl was Mr. Mubarak's granddaughter. Ms. Mahroug, widely known as Ruby and now aged 18, has denied sleeping with the Prime Minister but has said she received 7,000 euros, around $9,400 from him as a gift after one of his parties. On Sunday, hundreds of thousands of Italian women held nationwide protests against their embattled Prime Minister in more than 60 towns and cities across Italy and overseas. Mr. Berlusconi's fast-track trial in front of three female judges will start at a court in Milan at 0930 on Wednesday 6 April, the judge announced. If convicted, the Prime Minister could face up to 15 years in prison. Egypt Crisis Army Sets Constitution Reform Deadline Egypt's ruling military council has announced that the work on reform in the country's constitution is to be completed in 10 days. A committee led by a retired judge has been tasked with proposing legal changes, said the council. It earlier suspended the current constitution which was amended during ousted President Hosni Mubarak's tenure to strengthen his grip on power. Mr. Mubarak stepped down last week after more than two weeks of protests. The Higher Military Council, which assumed power after Mr. Mubarak stepped down, said on Tuesday that the amended constitution would be put to a popular referendum. The eight-member committee is mostly made up of experts in constitutional law, but in includes a senior figure from the opposition group, the Muslim Brotherhood. Unimpressed. There has to be uh, meaningful negotiations with a broad cross-section of the Egyptian people, uh, including opposition groups. As the chaos enters its second week, the first Americans leaving Cairo arrived in Greece. The State Department expects to evacuate about 1,200 Americans Monday and another 1,400 on Tuesday. Real danger. I mean, there was tension. We were concerned. But, you know, we didn't fear for our lives. The firing was in the air. Good evening, everybody. My administration has been closely monitoring the situation in Egypt, and I know that we will be learning more tomorrow uh, when day breaks. As the situation continues to unfold, our first concern is preventing injury or loss of life. So I want to be very clear in calling upon the Egyptian authorities to refrain from any violence against peaceful protesters. The people of Egypt have rights that are universal. That includes the right to peaceful assembly and association, the right to free speech, and the ability to determine their own destiny. These are human rights, and the United States will stand up for them everywhere. I also call upon the Egyptian government to reverse the actions that they've taken to interfere with access to the Internet, to cell phone service, and to social networks 